Sweet. All right. Let me know if you guys can see my screen here. This is kind of like what I want to share with you. Uh, it's all on yeah, here. For you. So basically, what I want to share with you is it's basically like what has gotten me to you know do 40 policies per month. Um, you know, I think we talked about this earlier, the leads are important for sure, but uh, what's really got me there is I think what I've boiled down to and realized my success has been is like, I've been able to sell a lot of people that I don't think um, most people can sell. And I just give that to my natural ability of selling. And this is my goal for you guys. I'm going to share with you my script of things that I do um, and share with you the three pieces that I really just kind of focus on in every sales call that allows me to move people forward and also do a little bit of objection and handling at the back. So um, moving into this, uh, let's hit continue. Um, I just want to share with you my numbers. This is not me just being like random. And this guy is selling 40 policies uh, in January. You can see here I did, I sold 40 policies. I only spent $1,400 on leads and I submitted over $31,000 worth of business. Um, I'm building an agency right now. So I'm doing this part time and I'm hitting these numbers. So our goal is just to share with you like what I'm doing. Um, this is um, in February. I sold, I did 42 policies as well, right around 29,000 of AP uh, submitted. Um, and then this was last month. I did 42 policies again with 1700 and lead spend. So really not buying a lot of leads. I'm calling a lot of order leads that I'm generating. And most importantly, I just want to share with you why, um, why I think I'm able to do this. And I want to hope, hopefully you guys, uh, been able to duplicate this as well. My success numbers and what I really track every day. And I think it's really important, um, is dials. Now, one of the things that you can control and as I'm starting to learn on trying to learn about how you can extract more value out of the order is that. The dials are really the only thing that you can control in this business when you're doing those outbound dials. This is kind of boring. Everyone talks about it, but really the 150 to 300 dials per day. Um, and this dialing metric does depend on how many presentations you're doing. If you're getting, if you have a lead source or you're picking up and getting a lot of presentations, you might not hit your 300 dials. But the one thing that you can focus on every day is doing the 150 to 300 dials every day. This is the non-negotiable because you make these dials, you know how to say, and you know how to t keep anybody on the phone. All they have to do is pick up the phone and you're going to win. You're going to sell um, presentations. I'm looking for three to five hour, three to five presentations. A presentation to me is like I'm giving someone a number because if I can give three to five people a number every day, um, statistically speaking, you're going to close one or two deals every day. You just got to get them there. And I think a lot of people struggle with getting them to the close or the objection in the beginning where they're like, you know, call me back later. You get hung up on or in the mid sentence, they'll, they'll get try to get you off the phone. If you can be really resilient and get them to the end most people will buy. And what I've learned is that if you don't sell them right then and there, it's typically really hard to close them. So in this whole mindset of, you know, of, of selling is like, you need to sell this person today. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, because if the, if you don't sell them, someone else is going to sell them. Right before this call, I called a, I called a lead. I was calling some of the old leads I generated. The lead was generated in of, of August of last year. August of last year, I called her and I took her down. I submitted an application and she just did an application two days ago, but she was an oldie. These people are really shopping and they're looking for the right buyers. They're looking for the right agent. And if you can become that right agent, you can actually start crushing it and make some money in this industry. Three to five hours of talk time. Um, a huge mistake that I think a lot of people could be tracking or, or, or making right now is if you're not tracking your data, if you're not tracking your numbers, then you don't even know how to measure your success. Um, what I know is that if I make 52 outbound calls, I will generally make a sale. So if you're not tracking your numbers right now, like it's a huge mistake that I made early on. And you can start seeing if you're, if your outbound calls need to go up then you need to make, you know, work longer hours. Or if you went from 52 outbound dials last week to make a sale and it's like 175, then, you know, it might be a lead problem or, you know, you have to make some things or changes, but if you're not tracking, uh, it's really going to cost your efficiency and um, you could be losing a lot of money if you don't really know exactly how many calls you need to make. Lastly, don't ever complicate it. It's outbound dialing. This stuff is not sexy. Like, especially when you're calling leads, like there's no way to get around it. And if you want to become successful, you just literally have to pick up and do the work. I think 80, 50, 60% of the PMs that I get, people are not succeeding. And I ask them, how many dials are you doing? Or like, what's going wrong? And they're like, oh, I just got started. Like, if you're not doing the work, you are not going to make the sales. I spoke to a buddy of mine yesterday. They close one to three month old leads every day because they're making three to 500 calls. So if you can make the calls, the numbers will work. And I spoke with multiple people that are successful, a guy who actually owned an insurance company. And he says, if you just focus on these metrics, like there's no way you don't make this business work. It's just an unsexy business model. And that's why people start developing leverage. But let's jump into the my sales um, presentation. What's the goal of this training? I want to teach you how to sell, solve all your financial problems in this business. I think for me and for you, a lot of your headaches and your struggles and your bank statements, all these problems that you're going through right now can be simply solved if you can learn how to sell. Because if you can just plug in, you know, pick up the leads and just go off to the phones and you know you're gonna sell someone, the chargebacks will go away. Um, 
you'll actually start to like this business for me. Um, if you can sell enough and have good systems, like I don't see chargebacks is because I know if I can sell two policies a day, if someone's off the books after three months, I'm going to sell someone else. So I just truly believe sales is su super important before you do the marketing, before you do the lead gen, before you do all that stuff. What got me in this position here and I'm still nowhere when I want to nowhere where I be is, is I learned how to sell. And if you can learn how to sell, you can solve a lot of your financial problems in this business. And I think this is why most people leave. Um, I give you guys my script away for free. This has not been given just because I think there's a lot of people out there that are trying to sell courses that are trying to um, say that they're a guru, but they have never sold life insurance before. And I just hope to be a platform and, and training place for you guys where you can be like, this guy actually kind of knows what he's doing and he leads by results. And um, the goal for this is to help you guys get to one per day. If you do the dials, if you can learn the script, if you can practice and train, you will stay in this business because most people fail because they don't know how to sell. And our goal is to get you to one policy per day. Lastly, first and foremost is that, um, I don't know if you've seen, but we have an agency we're growing. If we can get the 5K or more a month, my goal is eventually work with every single one of you guys. I know I have the training, the systems and processes where I can blow up your business. But uh, if we get you there one day, just know that we're here for you. Um, so let's talk about the leads. Um, if I'm ever going too fast, stop me. I get really excited. I talk too much, but leads. So the leads, I don't think really matter. We talked about this earlier. Leads plus outbound dials and your sales skill will equal money in your bank account. If you have a thousand leads and you're calling these people and you absolutely suck at selling, you're not going to make sales. But if you have a thousand terrible leads, you know, you're making the dials and you know how to actually sell. You give me a three month, four month, five month old lead. I want you to ask yourself, do you have the confidence right now in your sales ability to close anyone? And this is the goal of this training is to become so like good where you can wake up every day and you know, like, hey, if I just sit in my chair every day, this, this chair that I'm sitting in right here needs to be where you spend your day. And I hate to be that guy, but I spend way too much time sitting in this chair. And this is why I'm able to close people. That's why I'm working all day. And most people are just not spending enough time on the phones. And it's not just, um, it's not the leads. I just really stress this. I used to think like, you know, if I had better leads, I'd make more money. It's sure it's going to help with efficiency, which you can see in number three here, better leads help with efficiency, which also can create like a change in your acquisition costs. But overall, like, it's your skill. And I just want everyone, before we jump into this, ask yourself right now, just being really transparent. Like if you called yourself right now and you were looking for life insurance, like, would you honestly buy from yourself? Like, would you honestly, like this person cares about me. This person treats me like no other agent. This first person's got my back. This person loves me. This person will be there for me, put in systems in place that this person, I don't care who they are. I want to work with them. And most of us aren't just skilled enough to be honest with us. I'm like, damn, this is the best. And for me, this could be a confidence thing, but I genuinely like, damn, these people want to work with me. And if they work with me, they're really freaking lucky. And I want you guys to go into every sale. Like no one's better than you. And it's a mindset thing. It's a confidence thing that you have to acquire. And if you don't have it there, um, you just need to work on it every day. But let's go into some of the things. Now, this is really important. I think I was thinking about what has helped me sell. And most importantly, like what are the components that are in every sale that I'm looking for? If you can address these three things in every sale, if I'm speaking to Miss Betty and she has all of these three things, I will close her every time. And I think in initially there's people that you can pick up the phone with and you can know right off the jump that this person's gonna buy. But here are the three ingredients that you need in every sale. I'm gonna break down it in my script of why I identify them and how I extract them by using their words against them. Um, this is actually the secret of sounding like an expert in this business. So number one, you need that uh, established authority and trust. You need that, that tonality off the jump. Um, if you're the best agent, but they don't trust you, they don't feel like you, you care and they don't feel like you're an expert right now off the jump. I don't care if you have a free policy, they're not going to buy from you. So this is why having that authority, having that trust and establishing that through your tonality, through the whole framework of the sale is really important. If they feel some type of, man, I don't know about this guy. He's a little shaky or, um, there's just a, there's just something off like a, like a red flag, like the smallest red flag, these people will hang up on you. And that's why I want to share with you how to establish the authority and trust the right way. And you do this through tonality. This is not in the presentation, but I want to share with you. You have to have this balance of, um, actually understanding who they are. If you're speaking to an old lady and she's really quiet, you want, to, you want to kind of guide her that way, but you want to have this, this charisma of like, all right, I know what we're getting to, but also bring, you know, pulling back that curtain where you can actually just get people to release their guard or to sit back in their chair. And I'm going to share with you kind of how you can do that. And then I want to share with you something I've never really thought of, but this is really important. If this is not, is this not established in your sales presentation, you will not make the sale. You have to find a way and you have to identify where the point of value is in the sale. Now for me, the point of value, I think is around three to four things. Number one, if you have a product that you're selling, 
and you can tell this person, you can put them in a better position, get them from a two year waiting period to an instant coverage because of the product or company that you work with in their health condition, this is a point of value. Does that make sense? So why does someone, you need some type of value other than just life insurance and you being a cool person that they trust you. You need some type of um, a point of value. So number one, if you can get them from a placement, from a, a two year policy to an instant policy, it's almost like a no brainer. Secondly, if you can have a huge gap in helping them save money, I don't want to take offense if anybody on here is with Lincoln and Heritage. I love when I hear someone just got a Lincoln and Heritage policy because I know if they're healthy, I can save them 30, 40 bucks. Now, you might say this policy has other benefits. Great. But a lot of people that we are working on are on fixed incomes. When you're on 100, 1,000 to 15,000, like $1,500 worth of income, if you can save $40, you know, they might think about switching their policy. That's another point of value. And then third is this points of value of like, you know, waiting period or, you know, this advisor, you know, he doesn't call me enough. You got to pick up these small things that these people are going to tell you that if you listen the right way, they might have some type of problem that you need to identify, which we're going to share with you here. And then the third, you need massive amounts of pain. I'm going to share with you guys here how you can use your words, um, how you can use your words to track their words against themselves. Basically a principle that I like to say, make them feel stupid for not wanting to buy a free meal. I want to share with you the ways that I do this, because you want this person to be like, oh my gosh, I just share with them all this stuff. Yeah, I need the life insurance. My family's in a really bad position. They don't have the money. They're gonna have to start a GoFundMe. There is so much pain where they should feel stupid from not buying. And this all ties into the last step of objection handling. If you can counter these three things into one, your objection handling, it comes down to one thing simple, explain away the concerns. Everyone out there says, oh, you have to have this objection or that objection, or you need to say this the right way. It's BS and final expense. You just need to understand what their real concern is and address it immediately. And if you can address it immediately, then you can actually understand this person gonna be a good client or not, and you can move forward. I'm gonna share with you at the end, the goal of this presentation is to get you to sell clients, but it's also to sell you the right clients. For you to build the book of business, for you to stay in this business, you guys need to sell the right clients. And when I can go into my my um, my portal and realize that I have a 98% retention on a certain carrier, a 96% retention, or everything's over 90% retention, it's not because I'm just selling everyone. I'm selling the right clients, I'm extracting the pain, and most importantly, I'm finding the point of value so that they would feel dumb not going to a different carrier if you called them. So let's go into the script. Um, so far, so good. You guys liking how it's going? Sweet. A lot of, lot of excitement here. Let's yeah. see if I can hit it. No, we're muted. No, this is great. Keep so going. It is, here's my script. Um, so you can see there's an old lead intro and a new lead intro. Um, they're both pretty simple. I kind of just kept it in regards to if it's a Facebook ad, if it's a TikTok ad, if it's a smart financial lead, whatever it is, this is, can be very universal. At the top, this is the intro. This is how you address when you're going to see it's going to say trust. It's going to say POV. It's going to kind of explain to you why I have structured the script this way. And it's to simply address the certain points that we need to address. So uh, how I jumped it was like, hey, uh, hey, John, this is Peter. Um, real quick, I'm just finally getting back to you. So I've been really, you know, this is an old lead. I'm just really busy in regards to the request you sent in on Facebook or the request you sent in on um smart financial research, the request that you filled out um, and you listed blank and you listed some type of information. Is that correct? So in the first intro, what you're doing is you're just basically letting them know why you're reaching out and explaining to them, you know, why you're even calling. So it's very simple. Um, sometimes even for an older lead, I'm like, Hey John, this is Peter. I'm so sorry. I know you're probably really mad at me for calling you, but um, you know, it's been a while, but it shows here you sent this request in on Facebook and it shows here you listed, you know, your birthday as six, four fifty four. Is that correct? Yes. And then you move forward for a new, for a new lead. It's Hey John, this is Peter. I'm just getting back to you in regards to this request you sent in on, you know, TikTok. It shows here you listed your info, you know, your beneficiary as John, or you listed um, whatever it is. Just remind them what the information is and let them know. Now, the second question that's very optional that I use in every pitch this is establishing point of value. Is um, if they answer, yeah, that's right, Peter. Okay, perfect. Do you currently have any coverage in place? Now you also can start understanding what their situation looks like. Uh, let me see if I can hit next. Okay. And they're going to be like, yeah, I have some coverage in place. You're going to hold that information against them here in a second. Okay. And were you just, John, looking to leave something for the family or are you just trying to cover those burial expenses? And then you just kind of let them explain. In this sales presentation, I let them talk more than I'm talking. So they're going to say, oh, I want to go ahead and leave something behind for my family. Um, and here's the question. They say they, they do have coverage. Could you ask them earlier? Okay. This is point of value. Were you just looking to add on to what you currently have, John? Or are you just trying to find something a bit more affordable?
Now, John's going to tell you this. I love when people say, yeah, I'm just trying to add on to what I have, you know, because that means he's probably already has life insurance policy. You know, he already has something and you can add him on some more coverage. Also, you, if this is, you know, I'm just trying to find something more affordable. Then you want to go out there and say, okay, you want to find the point of value as soon as possible. You, know, you, you want to, um, you want to go out there and see how you can bring them value because you're trying to keep them on the phone. Oh my gosh, John. So kind of feel me. Are you just trying to save some money or are you just, um, you know, do you feel like you're overpaying for what you have? Like what's going on here? So they're going to be like, yeah, I just feel like I'm overpaying. Um, you know, it, I, it's super expensive. So what you're going to do is that if you use some type of program, you're going to put in their information, you got their birthday, you got, and you're going to as assess them as a, as a healthy individ individual. All right. Gotcha. Now you want to see what they have. All right. I have a $10,000 policy. It's $95 per month. Okay, great. Now you want to have more value here. And by chance that they put you with that two year waiting period and you're going to get a yes or no. What do you mean a two year waiting period? Well, th did they tell you when that policy starts that if something happens to you in the next two years, nothing's going to pay out. Did they put you with one of those? Yeah. What do you like? I thought all policies are like that and there's your point of value and that's where you make your sale. So right there, that information, you make the sale. If you can already know you can put them in a better position in the first two minutes of the call, the rest of the call is easy. I think some of the biggest mistakes that we make is we wait to the end of the call to bring them value instead of bringing the value in the beginning of the call. And this is exactly how you do it by asking the right questions. Um, also, we're going to explain some of the steps. This is really important. People don't know how this is happening. Is there a doctor coming out to my house? Is someone's coming with me to stick me with the needle? How do I get this life insurance? So the next thing is I kind of address what they got going on. I give them a little bit of information, and then I take control here. I'm the authority. I'm the expert here. This is point number one. I'm going to share with you, John. Okay, John. Now, kind of how we work, it just we just specifically help seniors find the most affordable and reduced plans for you statewide. Now, and the way that we're going to be able to do this for you, John, is that we will just work with all 26 companies here in the state. And my job is to help you find the most affordable plan that you may qualify for as a senior. OK, he's like, OK, and there's not much question asking there. Cool. And then you explain the process. Now, John, it's all non-medical, so you don't have to worry about like any doctors coming to your house. No needles, no blood work. I'm actually able to get you some answers here over the phone. OK. And he's like, OK, cool. And then I go right into the medical questions. I don't give them time to get off the phone. I'm like, OK. He says, OK, OK, got gotcha, John. Um, we won't run through these medical questions, but here's the ones that I say, you know, kidney, liver problems, just for underwriting. You want to make sure you put these people in the best position. And you also don't want to go into applications and having to pivot a ton. And this is why you ask the questions. It's really important. If you don't ask a lot of medical questions, you might be afraid that these people are going to hang up on you. But the best thing that you can do to put them in the best position is to assess that their health is. And I want to give you a tip that I've never shared before, but some people have previously lied on applications. And let's say Miss Susan has COPD and she just got a mutual Omaha level pro level policy like last yesterday. So you're telling me they put you with a level product at Mutual Omaha, you're paying $32 per month, and you told this your agent you have COPD. You're taking an inhaler and you're on, you have a nebulizer. Is that correct, Miss Miss Susan? Yes. Oh my gosh. So what happens here is that if something happened to you through the, you know, the contestability clause and if they found out that you lied out on your application, the you know, your policy wouldn't pay out. Did they not tell you about that? And right there inside of the medical question, you have more information that you can establish that you're an expert. But if you're not thinking about these different angles, the whole goal is to get them to share their story because it happens quite often. People are desperate as an agent and just personally, my business, my goal for you guys is to be the most ethical agent you can be out there. And most importantly, put people in really good positions. Um, I want you to be able to sleep better at night. I want you to be able to have the best clients. But most importantly, there's a lot of agents out there that are screwing over their clients that get death claims that don't pay out. And I don't want you to be one of those agents. Serve these clients like no other one else. And just ask them the medical questions as best you can. So credibility is super tr important. I go from medical questions to then establishing some more credibility. Um, these old folks, they do want to make sure that you're not a scammer, that you're not going to take their identity. And here's how I do it. It's just before we jump into this, I just want to share with you some of my personal information. It's just really important to me, Miss Sally. That's how I ask it. Think about with the way of the world that you just know exactly who you're talking to. So first off, uh, my first and last name is Peter Roberts. Did you get that? Cool. I also want to give you my personal cell phone number. I give them my work number. Just so you can call me, Miss Sally. You can text me. You can just reach out to me anything you need me directly. I'm always going to be here for you and blank, your beneficiary, or just always be here for you. And also, the state does require that I share with you my government identification number. With this number, it's going to share with you that I'm licensed with the state, that I've been through numerous background checks. And most importantly, I have the credentials to be speaking with you, Paul, in this today, okay? This number will also, this is something new, this number will also share through the color of hairs on my head. It'll share with you where I live. And if you ever need to show up to my house, just know you can always come there too, just so you know who you're talking to, okay, Miss Sally? 
And they're like, oh, yeah, thanks for telling me. Just want to let you know, Miss Sally, again, before we jump into this, I just, you know, people are getting really crazy here, and I just want you to know who you're talking to, okay? And now she trusts you. And now everything else is out of the way, and she knows that, you know, this guy, you know, he's brought me value up front. He's already told me he can give me a better policy. Now he is who he says he is, and he's just already putting these pieces together. You're stacking these value propositions upon each other, which makes the sales so much easier. Um, and word tracks, I want to show with you guys how you can start implementing word tracks that are really important as you're diving into the pitch or the body of this sale. Here's what I say with, you know, here are the common word tracks. At the bottom I say, fill me in, share with me, elaborate on, kind of just walk me through. These are the main, how I basically start every sale. So. Um, for example, when it's the kind of situation, Miss Miss Sally, can you just kind of fill me in? When you said that your children wouldn't have the money to pay for your burial, like, what do you mean by that? Or can you kind of walk me through what that would look like for them? So the goal of this is to extract more pain is by to ask deeper questions. And I think a lot of us could fall into a trap of like just asking very surface level questions because we know in my mind that she's probably going to buy, but you cannot skip this. Walk me through what you said by your that. What does that look like if you want to paint the worst situation in these people's heads so that um, that they want to buy. Like if there's not enough pain, they're not going to buy. Um, so let's jump into the next part of the script here, um, pain. So here's the first question that I asked. Let's say we got her all the way through the body. Now we're trying to see, all right, is she going to buy for me? So the first question I asked, I start this off, just discover how much pain's in the situation. It's just asking them like what had them looking. So, so back to you, Miss Sally, kind of just, Fill me in here, you know, what had you motivated to start, I guess, looking around for some some life insurance? And you can kind of see my hand. This is me. I'm just like, like, what's going on here? And they're going to explain. Let them explain. You've probably seen in my closes. This is where you're also going to find your value. You know, I had some coverage before, but, you know, it lapsed like two years ago. Or, you know, I just saw this, I saw this, you know, ad and I just wanted to leave something behind. Okay, gotcha. And then what clients want to understand is that you hear them. Okay, so it sounds like, Miss Sally, that you know you had coverage before, you went to the hospital, and then you had to drop the coverage, and now you're concerned that if something did happen to you today, that your son, Jimmy's gonna have to pay for your burial expenses. Is that is that right? Again, is that right? So like you're curious, you're trying to feel them out. Is, is this, we're on the same page here? She's gonna say yes. So discover what she's looking for and then you can go ahead and ask the second question now this question is if they broke down do you have coverage or do you not have coverage so in the beginning of the intro you remember when you asked him do you have coverage or place and let's say they don't have any coverage okay so kind of fill me in miss Sally, since you you know don't have any coverage in place like what are you what are you most concerned about let her ramble on let her talk about what she's worried about this this and that this is where their words are going to be used against them okay and you want to extract more pain. So since you don't have any coverage in place, you know, with Johnny or, you know, who would be responsible for coming up for the burial, burial calls, God forbid, if something happened to you. Okay, Johnny's going to have to pay for my burial expenses. And kind of fill me in. Is Johnny, like, this is another question, the dig deeper question that's not in the script. Kind of fill me in. Is is Johnny, like, God forbid, if you pass tomorrow, is Johnny in the position where he could come out of pocket for fifteen to $20,000 for your burial if something happened to you? No, he wouldn't. So let me ask you this here, Miss Sally. I'm diving deeper. If something did happen to you, what does that look like? Is he gonna have to start a GoFundMe? Is he gonna start knocking on doors? Is he gonna have to drain his savings account? What do you? What does that look like? And she's gonna say, "Oh, I don't know what he's gonna do. He's gonna have to, I guess, you know, start a GoFundMe." Okay, and then you label her. So, I guess, Miss Sally, as a mother, uh, it sounds like you don't want, you know, Johnny or your son having to come out of pocket to pay for your bail expenses. You don't want to have him put in this, you know, tough financial burden because of you not making a decision here today. Is that kind of right? And she's going to say yes. So again, diving into the pain, explaining what it looks like, making her feel what it looks like. These people have put things off their whole life and they think that like the government's going to save them or people are going to put them in the best positions, but no one's going to save them because they lack the ability to make a decision. And if you can make these people make a decision by getting them to finally snap into reality because they've neglected their life, their whole life, and you can realize that they are in a situation, you are doing them a service and you're actually helping them. Um, if someone says, I do have coverage, you know, this is also where you want to see, like, why would you even want coverage? Like, Jimmy, you told me earlier, you know, you mentioned you have some coverage in place right now. I guess kind of fill me in, like, why would you want some more coverage? Or, like, what are you most concerned about? And here's where you're going to stack that value. You know, I have this $15,000 plan, but I have, you know, a car payment with $15,000 left. And if I passed away tomorrow, my burial is not taken care of. So now, you know, there's a need for another policy. But a lot of people will try to sell people just because they want extra coverage, but they don't actually need it. 
Uh, I think one of the biggest things to stress here is that you as the agent are just to help them make a decision. This is not your policy, guys. I want you to share with them I like any objection handling. You want them to just want the policy, and you do that by not selling salesy and getting them to realize that they need it. Um, third thing is kind of fill me in. This is kind of another really important question I ask. I ask it every, every time, like you don't want to miss this question. So these people have been shopping their whole life. They have a policy. They don't have a policy. They filled out 50 lead forms. It's funny, the Facebook leads or whatever leads you're using, or if you're using Smart Financial, these people are on every platform. It's just about catching the people at the right time and being an expert. That's why I think the leads aren't as important as we think. Um, so kind of fill me in, you know, Miss Teresa, you know, it sounds like you've been looking around for a while now. Is, is that about right? You're just curious. Like you, you have been looking around. Okay. And then you want to ask them like, okay, so you have been looking, what's kind of, you know, what's going on here? What's kind of held you back from, you know, being able to find anything like, you know, what's been holding about, you told me earlier how important this is. What's been holding you back from actually getting some coverage. Cause she just explained all the pain. She knows how to solve this solution. She's probably talked to other agents. Why hasn't she bought the policy yet? You know, these agents, man, I can't trust anyone or, um, the policies have been doing too expensive. Okay. Miss, Miss Patricia, kind of walk me through when they say expensive, what does that mean? Well, the one guy down the street, he tried to give me a $10,000 policy and it was $168. And you know that you can sell our policy for 60 bucks, $168, Miss Patricia, man, that's get out. That's ridiculous. You want to call him together and tell that guy he's crazy. Cause I'm seeing here that you could get the same coverage for about $64. This is absolutely insane. 168. You just put her in a better position and she's like, Oh my gosh, really? There's so much value. She needs the coverage, but the problem is she can't afford it. So you got to find her something she can afford. Or he says, I've been looking around for a while. That's the question they asked. Have you just not been able to find anything that's comfortable and affordable for you? Or are you just really not sure what's out there? You know, I'm not really sure what's out there. Okay. Um, and then you can kind of understand, um, have you been looking? Like when you say you're not sure what's out there, have you been talking to agents? You can kind of see where they are. These people, I'm telling you, they're going to buy. It's a matter of when, if it's from you. Um, and that's why I asked that question exactly like that. And if they say, you know, hey, Peter, I just started looking around. Okay, okay, cool, gotcha. You don't dive into that. I just kind of keep it surface level. And then I address all the pain. So another question that I ask here is the pains, because not only the funeral expense is important, other than the burial expenses, Miss Patricia, are there any like large bills or debts that you're worried about leaving behind? Um, and she's going to say, you know, I have a few medical bills that I might be worried about, or I have like a little car note. So you can stack that value and make sure she has that peace of mind. The goal is just to learn what actually keeps them up at night. Um, I know they probably put things off, but you just ask that question to kind of see if you can bring them more value. It's a very surface level question. And then uh, the pre-close, this is where you're going to make the sale most of the time. So you extract the value. As you guys can probably see here, I've probably got them to say, tell me their whole life story. I've got them to really paint the picture. I really told them everything that, you know, I've really got to see, bring them value, kind of, you know, have the authority and really dissect what their situation looks like. Now it's like, okay, she trusts me. You know, I found her a decent option that she thinks she can qualify for. Um, if I could help you find something, Miss Patricia, this is a really uncomfortable question for me. It took a long time for me to get it. But once they can say yes to this, you'll move them forward. If I can help you find something, Miss Patricia, that's just comfortable and affordable, that kind of fits your budget, would there be really anything, I guess, holding you back to see if you can even get qualified? Um, well, I, I don't know. I, I just, as long as it fits my the, the common objection, this is what you do. You prepare for the objections up front so you don't get them at the end. This is why I asked this question. You know, I just, you know, I can't start this to the third. You know, um, I can't start this until the second Wednesday of the month. Okay, so, you know, my job here for you, Miss Patricia, is not to start this today. We can always set this up for a date that makes sense for you. But then we just have to first see if you can get approved here to set something in place, okay? Or, you know, yeah, I want the coverage, but, you know, I, I just think price. I just want to make sure I can afford it. You know up right front what the objections are. Or I need to speak to my daughter before this. Okay, you can handle every single objection right here in this question. So, you know, moving forward, what's going to come up when you go out there and close them. Because we already addressed it. You need to speak to your daughter. So if you, if you say, okay, Miss Patricia, let me ask you, if your daughter was here right next to you right now, do you think she upset at you for making sure if something happened to you tomorrow that she wouldn't be financially burdened? No. And I don't know why, but I just spit that off like it's natural. And I want you guys to feel the same way. It's just, it has to be quick and people can feel this, that you're good. Um, so the three objections is price, need, and time. You address that instantly with this pre-close. And if you can pre-close them, you're going to sell them. Um, and here's the, the final point of value, which we're going to kind of end on here in a second. We're going to jump into some other stuff is now you got to understand 
you want them to make a decision on how much coverage that they need. Um, now you can also also set up the down sell from you, but basically, so uh, the question I ask next is you want to see what they're going for. So Miss Patricia, are you planning for more of a formal burial or are you kind of planning for that uh, cremation route? Oh, I'm just going for the basic cremation. Okay. So just having like three, having like five to 7,000 to cover all your cremation expenses. Is that all you're really looking for? Yeah, that's fine. And you know, if I could leave a little bit extra to Jimmy, I'd love to do that too. Or uh, I'm just planning for a formal burial. Okay. So just having 10 to 15,000 to cover your burial expenses, all you're really looking for. Is that about right? Or is that correct? And then she's going to say yes. Now you know what to pitch them. And also want to share with you, just because they say they want the 10 to $15,000 plan does not mean that's what you're going to sell them. If they have a minimal income, be ready to sell them a $7,000 policy because these people still need the policy, but they can't afford it. But a little bit's better than having nothing, right? Yes. And then he's down and sell them. Um, and then money, this is why it's important. You ask them that, you have to ask them how much money they have. If you don't ask them how much money they're making, you can pitch someone a $20,000 plan and they only make 15000 you know, 1500 a month. It's just not going to make sense. Okay. And here's how I ask it. Ms. Patricia, we work with people who are on fixed income, social security, or disability, and those who are retired. Um, what would you say your approximate monthly is? Okay, 1500 is your month. And then next question is, okay, does that kind of go into like a card or is that, is that placed into a like checking account? And the reason that you ask that question is you want to see which carrier you use. Let's say, you know, if you're with Mutual Omaha and they have only a card that you can't, you can't actually, you can't take them there at Mutual Omaha. Okay. Um, and let's go into solving their problem. And here's how I just wrap it up here for them. And here's what I what I pitch them. So I pitch on the products. I'm not going to go into the products. It's super simple. It's just basically here's the product. This is what it's going to do. Here's the price. So I give them the three products. I'm like, okay. And Miss Patricia, kind of fill me in here. Um, oh, sorry, this is wrong. Explain the product. This is where I'm sorry. I'm, I'm off track here. Explain the product. So. People want term, people want whole life. They don't know what they want, but you got to let them know what they're getting. So kind of feel me in, Patricia, where you just looking for something where it'll be there for you for the rest of your life, uh, something where the costs will never change on you and the price will never go up or down on you, and something where it's guaranteed to pay out to Jimmy. Is, is that really all you're looking for? And they're going to say yes. Yeah. So they just agree that they want that product. They're going to ask you if it does. If you have a product that don't have a two-year waiting period, also include that. You also want something where it's going to start tomorrow to happen to you, correct? And then you're going to say yes. Um, but all in all, explain the product. I think a lot of people try to push the product on them. They don't really know what it is when it comes down to buying. So make sure when you explain the product, this is what they want. Oh, no, I want the term policy. Okay. But Miss Patricia, you told me that if something happened to you, you want to have something for the burial expenses and you're 76 years old, right? Yeah. And you know with the term policy that when you turn 80 or 85, that's going to expire on you, right? No, I didn't know that. And then you can educate them on why having a burial plan for the whole life coverage, we'll go ahead and address and actually solve their problem and alleviate their pain so you can actually sell them the product. Um, that's how I do it. And the close is simple. So our biggest challenge for you here after you give them the, the three options, the 10, the five, whatever you pitch them, is now our biggest challenge here is to see if you can actually get qualified. Um, but kind of fill me in here, Miss Patricia. You know, as a mother, you want to label them. As a mother, do you think the 5,000 or the, the 10,000 would be the will just give you the most peace of mind. So I always pitch them the last two options, the five, the seven, if I have a five, a seven, and a 10, I'll do the five and seven. If you have uh, a 10, a 15, and a 20, do the 10, and then the 15, you pitch them the lowest, and you actually discourage the third one. Um, it just helps with making them feel like you're not a sales individual. Um, and sometimes they're like, oh no, the, the third one looks better, and they'll actually upsell themselves. So um, that's kind of how I do, but make sure you identify them. And then once they go ahead and make the buying decision, I ask them this one more time. This is why my retention is good. And this is why your retention should be great is okay. So Miss Patricia, you want to go ahead and move forward with the $15,000 option. Is that right? Yes, I do. Okay. And that $15,000 option, it's going to be $46 and 34 cents. And that's going to come out of, you know, your account every month to pay for your life insurance. Will that be comfortable and affordable for you every month? Okay, it will be. Okay. And every month, this is something you can keep, it's something you can sustain, and this is something that you're going to have for the rest of your life. Is that right? Okay. Okay. So, what I'm going to do here, I did my best here to see if you can get approved. We're going to go ahead and submit this application. Then you can set up for a date that makes sense for you. Does that sound fair? So, I like double qualify them before ever, um, ever moving forward in the application. Dude, I used to get slammed with chargebacks, you know, when it, when it looked like I was crushing it because I would not ask those hard questions and it will save you so much time. You actually feel like you sold a client. And when you can take this framework of like selling someone just to sell them to transitioning them to become a client for life, 
oh man, this business gets good. And especially when those residual and the residuals start coming because they've actually kept their policy. So just something there. Um, let's hit next for you. And then here's the objection handling. It's just a picture of an onion, but this is what I think about every time. And I want you guys to have this mental in image when someone gives you an objection. Um, it's the bank account. It's, you know, my sister, I need to talk about her or it's, um, I don't know if I need it right now, or let me think about it. The only way that you do is you just peel back the onion. Okay. Miss Patricia, when you say think about it, what does that mean? Okay, I need to talk to John about it. Okay, and if John was here right now, what do you think he would say about this? Uh, he would be kind of upset, but he doesn't know if I can afford it. And what would he be upset about if you couldn't afford it? What does that mean? You just dive deeper, and you actually kind of want these people to hang up on you. Because the people that need to think about it or you know, continue to just marinate on it are never going to buy from you. But the point is to take those people that are right on the fence. This is what makes you from good to great. That are right there on the fence. You know, They have commitment issues. Um, they're not sure if they need it. You just peel back the onion. Okay, Miss Patricia, you mentioned you mentioned earlier that if something happened to you, that Johnny would have to knock on doors, start a GoFundMe, and you don't really know how he would pay for burial expenses. So when you say you don't know if you need it, can you kind of kind of walk me through like what what are you most concerned about? Okay, she can explain. Uh, I, I I don't know. Okay, so like be honest with me here, Miss Patricia. Like what are you what are you most worried about? Is it just too expensive, or are you just not sure if you need it? No, I definitely need it. So, Miss Patricia, if you know you need it, let me ask you this. Is it just a little bit too expensive? Yes. Okay. So, now that we know that you need it, Miss Patricia, how about we just do this? I know that 10000 is really what you want, but would you say having a little bit is better than nothing? Yes. Okay. So, why don't we just try it to 7000 If he gets you approved, like I said earlier, I'm going to be your agent for life. So, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to check up on you every three to six months. And in the next three to six months, if you want to add to it later, you can always do that. But how about we just start you with something small right now? And if you can have something, would you say having something small would give you the peace of, night, peace of mind at night, knowing that if something happened to John, happened to you, that Johnny would be okay? Would that help you sleep better at night? Yes, it would. All right. Let's go ahead and see if you get you approved for the 7000 And I'm going to be here for you for the rest of your life. Does that sound fair? And then you just close her. Or I don't know if I can want to give you my social. When you say you don't want to give me your social, Miss jo Miss Mr. Johnson, what are you what are you most concerned about? I just don't like giving my social out to random people. Peel it back, okay? And when you when you say like, is it just you're not sure if you trust me, or you just think I'm going to scam you? Like, what what's your biggest fear? You just keep digesting. You get them to just feel stupid. Like you've done everything on your part, and sometimes you just ask them, you know. I pull it away. You know, Mr. Mr. Johnson, you know, it sounds like you don't need me. It sounds like you don't need my help. It sounds like you don't want to protect your family. You know, would it be best to just close this application so we don't need anything? No, 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 no. And then when you don't come off as a sales individual and you're a human person actually cares about them, you're reeled in and you close them. But this thing about that, I could go on and on about objection handling. I don't think there's magical word tonality or frameworks that you have to say. It's literally just these people don't know if they can afford it. They don't know who to trust and they don't know like what to do. So just peel back the onion, make them feel dumb. And if they don't want to move forward, you've done everything you could. Um, but that's kind of my, that's kind of like my, my framework right there. Start to finish. I hope this was extremely valuable for you, for you guys, but um, would love to just open the floor up for any um, questions. And it's kind of a lot. I feel like I broke into a lot, but please, uh, please just unmute. And if you have a question, just, just shoot them.